We start in Paris where Katie Hodgkinson has just won gold in the women's 800 metres final at the Olympics. It was an absolutely uh, sensational run. She led from uh, the gun uh, all the way to the tape and never really looked in doubt. She had so much expectation, so much pressure on her shoulders. She was the hot favourite going into the race. Uh, she qualified fastest for this final, but when she walked out onto the track, she looked so relaxed. Her shoulders weren't hunched. She didn't look like she felt the weight of pressure and expectation on her. And then when she crossed the line, she punched the air in delight, it, almost as though she couldn't believe it. It was such a strong race. She was pushed along the home straight. She wasn't ahead, but she was pushed along the home straight. But then we saw that... Uh, that uh, kick that we've seen so often from her at the last, where she sprinted home, opening the gap between her and her rivals to bring the gold home. 20 years after Dame Kelly Holmes won gold in the 800 metres for Team GB at the Olympics as well. Let's get some uh, reaction to this and speak to our reporter, Miriam Walker-Khan, who is outside the stadium. What a sensational run and a sensational gold from one of the poster girls of Team GB. Yeah, Jess, that was absolutely electric. Keely Hodgkinson, 800 metre Olympic champion, a 22 year old from Manchester, from Wigan, is the Olympic champion of the 800 metres. It was incredible to watch. And like you said, she led from the gun. That sprint finish at the end was incredible. She was so calm, so composed, which is crucial in an event like that where it can get tricky, it can get tactical, you can get boxed in. But she was so calm. And I think that just sums her up. She has got so much confidence in herself. And this whole season, she's gone in with a massive amount of pressure on her shoulders. And she's absolutely just been incredible to watch. The way she has bounced back after the past few years, three global silver medals, a silver medal at Tokyo in those Olympics when she was just 19, a silver at the World Champs in Eugene in 2022, a silver in Budapest in 2023. But she's bounced back when it matters the most and just in amazing, amazing form, all season running the quickest times in the world in six years. And she's just been a joy to watch. And you also have to give a shout out to her coach, a middle distance legend, uh, Jenny Meadows, who's really helped her through the past few years. And you can see that maturity has almost been passed on to her because to act like that in a stadium full of people, and it kind of feels like a home games because we're so close to home. And to have so much confidence when you've got the, the world reigning champ in the lane next to you is just incredible. So our first 800 metre Olympic champion in 20 years. Absolutely brilliant, isn't it? And uh, the emotion on her face when she crossed the line was absolutely brilliant. She ran over uh, to her friends, to her family. She had the uh, Union Jack... Uh, draped over her shoulders. It was just so, so emotional. You mentioned her coach is there, uh, Jenny Meadows, and, and Jenny Meadows' husband, Trevor Painter, and he said that he could see her challenging the world record at some point. He thinks that she is years away from her peak. How can that be when she's just won a, a gold medal? Just give us a sense of what she's been through over the years. Um, and for those that haven't perhaps followed her career very closely, what kind of athlete she is. Well, I think when you know that she's got three silver medals at Global Champs in a row and then she can bounce back and do that, it kind of tells you everything. But to be 19 in Tokyo and win a silver medal is just incredible. And the 800 metres are so competitive, the women's 800. And I think Trevor's right, she could break her world record because if she's doing this at 22, off just a few years of experience on the global stage, who knows what more she can do. Now she's kind of racing against the clock. She's proved what she needs to prove. I'm sure she'll win other global medals. I'm sure that she'll just keep going because she's so confident in her own ability. We spoke to her a few weeks ago at the London Diamond League and she was absolutely going for gold. There was a pacemaker in that race and I said to her, is, did you ask for that pacemaker? And she said, that's my training partner. I said, but did you ask for it? And she said, yeah. And you can tell she just wants to run quicker and quicker and quicker every time. And that is amazing to watch because she's not just settling for medals. The fact that she's pushing herself when she knows she's so clear of the rest of the field is just incredible to watch. And 
the atmosphere in the stadium honestly was incredible. It felt like everyone was just cheering her on. I got goose, I got a bit teary at the end, to be honest, because just seeing a Northern woman win that event is incredible on the global stage. When it's so competitive, Jess, isn't it? So just amazing to be part of that and just watch her kind of just just be such a legend of the sport already when she's so young, so young. Yeah, I'm not surprised you were tearized. We, we had goosebumps here at Sky Sports News HQ uh, watching her whiz around the track. And she was whizzing, let's be honest. Her time, uh, 1 minute 56.72. Absolutely incredible. Uh, you know, a good two and a half seconds off that world record, but you, you wouldn't bet against her breaking that in the next couple of years. And just in terms of her training, which she mentioned, she's been training at altitude in South Africa and the Pyrenees in four-week blocks. She's put so, so, so much, so much into this. What do you think this medal might do now to change her life, but also maybe give British athletics a bit of a boost? It's their first athletics medal, Team GB, since Mo Farah back in 2016. Yeah, I think generally British middle distance running right now is in an incredible place. I think that was kind of um, catapulted by Jake Whiteman a few years ago and Eugene at the World Championships when he won that uh, medal and that gold medal in 2022 and then Josh Kerr the next year bursting onto the kind of the world stage. So I think him, uh, Josh Kerr has all been in the 1500 final tomorrow night. He is a massive favourite for gold. So I think the whole of Br uh, British middle distance running is in such a strong place and that can only kind of breed success for everyone else. And I think we've been missing that, haven't we, for a few years, that era uh, of middle distance running, especially in like the 80s that I wasn't born for and, and people talk about it in such an incredible way. And I think that is what we'll have with this era, with Keeley, with Josh, with Jake. And it's just been amazing to watch as well. The two girls that made the semi-finals, Mariki and Phoebe Gill, they're so young as well. So I think there's so much more to come and it's a really, really exciting time for athletics. It really is. Uh, I'm not sure if she could go to the supermarket beforehand, but she definitely won't be able to now, will she? <laughs> no, no and, and that's good. We want those athletes to be recognised the way that other sports stars are. I think it's brilliant for the sport when you're doing it on that level. I think people don't really watch, if they're not into athletics, they don't watch the world champs like they watch the Olympics, obviously. So to do it when it really matters is so crucial and so good for the sport. It really is. Um, OK, before Keely Hodgkinson uh, ran that sensational 800 metres, there was British interest, of course, in the women's 200 metre semi-finals. And uh, both Daryl Nita and Dina Asher-Smith through to the final. Yeah, both of them second in their semis. I think Dina's was tricky. She had Gabby Thomas, who was a silver uh, medalist at the Worlds last year in her semi, and she absolutely stormed to victory in that semi-final. She looked really, really strong, but very relaxed and kind of cruised through the last 20, 30 metres. Dina looked uh, like she was running kind of uh, a bit harder, she said in an interview after her heat, that she was running angry after her disappointment in the 100 metres the night before, where she came fifth. She didn't make that 100 metre final. She's never made uh, an Olympic 100 metre final, so she will have been really, really disappointed with that fifth in the semi. But she's in that final tomorrow for the 200 metres, so that's done. Same for Daryl. Daryl came in, uh, I think, a, a lot more uh, full of energy after her 100 metre final. It was her consecutive 100 metre Olympic final, and that just sh kind of shows how much she's grown as an athlete as well over these past few years because she was eighth in Tokyo, fourth a couple of nights ago here, and she seems to just brought that confidence in. I think it would be really easy to go back and, you know, feel heartbreak after that fourth position in the 100 final, but she seems to just bounce back really uh, quickly and is excited to run. You can see that she's running really relaxed as well. She seems really happy, really kind of optimistic. So that is really, really exciting as well. Yeah, it's exciting times, isn't it, for uh, Team GB on the track. Uh, Miriam, great job as always. I'm jealous you got to be there, but uh, well done. Thank you for the moment. Now, of course, elsewhere, Great Britain have won their first track cycling gold medal of these Olympics. Emma Finucan and Sophie Capewell and Katie Marchant set a new world record on their way to gold in the women's team sprint. While the British trio beat New Zealand in a new record time of 45.338 seconds, roared on by plenty of British fans inside the velodrome, it's the first time Britain has won a women's team sprint medal of any colour at the Olympics. 
American gymnast Simone Biles suffered double disappointment in Paris as she missed out on adding more gold medals on the floor and beam apparatus. First event of the day was the beam. Three athletes had fallen off during their routines and uncharacteristically, Biles became the fourth. Despite the high difficulty of her routine, the fall cost her a medal and she finished in fifth with Italy's Alice Diamato taking gold. Next was the floor. Biles had a difficulty score of half a mark higher than any other gymnast in the final. She executed her routine well, but the power of her tumbles took her outside the landing area twice, and that cost her the gold. She finished three one hundredths of a mark behind her closest rival, Brazilian Rebecca Andrade, who became the first gymnast to beat Biles in a floor final. And there was further drama for the bronze medal, Biles' USA teammate, Jordan Charles, contested her score and was upgraded from fifth into third. Beam final is always the most stressful, um, but usually we have like music or background noise, whatever that may be. And honestly, we do better in environments when there's noise going on because it feels most like practice. So today, like you could hear some of the Android ringtones going off, the photo clickers, whatever that was. And so, you know, you're trying to stay in your zone and then people start cheering and then the shushing gets louder. So really they should be shushed because they're louder than them. I don't know. It was really weird and awkward. And we've asked several times if we could have some music um, or some background noise. So I am not really sure what happened there, but yeah, not our favorite. None of us liked it. Uh, yeah. It was an odd beam final. I've been out on that floor so many times competing, so obviously exhaustion and all of that sets in, but we still had to go out and compete one more time today, and it's such an honor to compete with these girls on both the beam and on the floor. Obviously, it wasn't my best performances, but at the end of the day, it, whoever medaled, medaled, and that's what's so exciting because you just never know with gymnastics. So I'm not, I'm not ve very upset or anything about my performance at the Olympics. I'm actually very... Happy, proud, and even more excited that it's over. <laughs> the stress of it. A couple years ago, I didn't think I'd ba be back here at an Olympic Games. So competing and then walking away with four medals, I'm not mad about it. I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself. Well, she's still smiling, isn't she? Uh, let's take a look at where Biles ranks then amongst the most successful female Olympians. She's seventh overall. Is the third American on the list behind swimmers Katie Ledecky, who took her tally to 14 in Paris, and then Jenny Thompson. And Biles finishes the Games as the third most successful gymnast of all time. Her 11 medals draw her level with Czech's Vera Kashlavska, but the all-time leader is the Soviet gymnast Larissa Latanina. Now, Great Britain won triathlon mixed team relay bronze, despite initially being announced as silver medalist. Uh, Germany took gold and Team GB's Beth Potter and American Taylor Nib crossed the line together. Britain were initially announced as having won silver, but following a review, it was confirmed just before the medal ceremony that the United States had, in fact, finished second. What well, disappointment for Molly Cowdery. She was eliminated from the women's pole vault in the qualifying rounds. Cowdery, who's the world indoor champion and set a British record of 4.92 metres at the event in June, failed to make 4.55 in her three attempts. Uh, there was more disappointment for Tokyo bronze medalist Holly Bradshaw, who was also eliminated. Team GB's Alistair Chalmers qualified for the semi-finals of the 400 metre hurdles in dramatic fashion. Chalmers was battling for third place, threw himself over the line, and that clinched the final automatic qualification place. The dive allowed him to finish just two hundredths of a second in front of Germany's Joshua Abu Aku, who missed out on a place in the next round as a result. Former European champion Zarnell Hughes has withdrawn from his 200 metre heat with a hamstring injury. Hughes ran last night in 100 metres and failed to reach the final after finishing sixth in the semis. It's unclear whether he'll be able to take part in the 4 by 100 metre relay for Team GB.